What's going on guys? So this is the Q&A part 2. Um, <clears throat> I made a video telling you guys, hey, leave me your questions down below and and on Twitter. Um, also in the comment section of the video. And you guys left um, quite a few questions and today I am going to be... Um, I'm going to be answering those questions for you guys here. Now, um, getting into the first one, Tom Sherry says on Twitter, he says, Who are your favorite YouTubers? So, <clears throat> when it comes to, you know, there, I watch a lot of different stuff. Okay, I watch a lot of different stuff. So, when it comes to news and politics, you know, there's kind of like the big four for me. Uh, you have, of course, Secular Talk. You have the Jimmy Dore Show. Um... Actually, sorry, that should be five. So, David Pakman, Sam Cedar, and The Humanist Report. Those are kind of the main five that I watch because you kind of get a big array and they, they all have, like, kind of different styles of how they do their show. So, someone like Sam Cedar, you'll get, like, a lot more, like, strict kind of policy-wise um, statistics and how it works and everything like that. And David Pagman as well. And Secular Talk, you'll get like very well nuanced responses and things like that. So, all very good. Those are my favorite news and politics YouTubers. Now, I don't just watch news and politics, of course. Um, some, um, some other people that I watch, I like H3H3's content. I think that he's very funny. And he has been, but I think that he's hit like a bit of a rock. I haven't seen any good content for him in a strong minute. And my, my, my reasoning for this is that I think that his, his effort or just his content in general has gone down ever since he started his podcast because he's more focused on the podcast than his actual channel. Now, I also, um, <clears throat> while I'm not really a sneakerhead in terms of even knowing like all, all about sneakers, like I'll know a little, I know like a small amount. But I really enjoy watching videos for some reason. So I'll watch Scoop208, you know, Kaisa Omar, Tony D2 Wild, etc, etc. That is one of my uh, areas of things that I watch as well. And um, I'll just watch, you know, clips of other things that I enjoy for sure. He also asked another question saying, <clears throat> What are your thoughts on Sam Harris? Sam Harris, okay, now he's a tough guy to kind of talk about because... There are, uh, there's been a lot of defaming of Sam Harris, and I have a lot of problems, you know, kind of problems with him. Um, like he's, you know, I've seen him advocate racial profiling, or at least it seemed that way, and there are some other comments that he's made about saying that, you know, Islam is kind of worse than other religions in terms of its, like, sheer writing of it, um, but, you know, he's still liberal, he's still anti-Trump, so you have to give him credit where credit's due. And uh, where I really disagree with him is when he got into that, could, the back and forth of Noam Chomsky, and I thought Noam Chomsky kind of handed him his ass in that. But, you know, Sam Harris, someone that basically, if you say anything about, people are going to say that you uh, misrepresented what he said. But moving on to the YouTube question, so, Dark and I Litter says, Do you think you can have a big portion of your videos debunking the right, especially Ben Shapiro and other, quote, heavyweight conservatives? So, um, I already do, like, a good amount of them, and if you guys have noticed, I've kind of, like, as the channel goes on, like, I'll go on, like, certain onslaughts on certain people. So, kind of, like, right now, you'll see, like, a lot of Ben Shapiro videos just because, for some reason, I'm in the mood just to, like, debunk his shit. But, you know, whether or not it's going to grow after the, you know, after I get to a certain point in the channel, I don't plan to just, you know, keep going at these guys. Um, I kind of would like to just break down the news for you guys. Um, Ray T says, would you rather vote for a libertarian or a corporate Democrat? Um, so the only downside you're kind of... Uh, bringing here when you say corporate Democrat really is war hawk is what it really seems like because otherwise it doesn't uh, make sense and obviously the you know the corporate things but that the libertarian is going to be worse than the corporate Democrat I'd vote for a corporate Democrat pretty much any day um, pretty much any day and uh, I think that that'd be a lot harder of a question for a lot of people but not for me so uh, <laughs> Ruben Chaco asks uh, I already asked this on Twitter if you didn't see but can you do videos on Mark Dice because he is another Alex Jones and Steven Crowder. Now, Mark Dice, I would do videos on, but he is such a, a lunatic that it's not even worth it. Like, you know, he he talks, he legit believes in the Illuminati. 
So the dude is way too far gone, and he's just a joke. With Alex Jones, like, if you notice, when I talk of, when I talk about Alex Jones, I'm not trying to debunk any of his claims because there's no point in debunking somebody like Alex Someone like Alex Jones, Steven Crowder, he does. He's not crazy like an Illuminati believer. And I actually go into the deep policy, and I've done like pretty deep debunkings of Steven Crowder. Um, another question from Ravikant Rye says, uh, "It seems unfortunate to me that Joe Rogan buys into the whole anti-SJW nonsense that Ruben peddles. Joe Rogan is obviously not a definite right winger." But it looks like he has bought into the whole narrative of anti-SJW, the regressive left, etc. Can you cover that too in some of your future videos when he when he too goes a bit soft on some of his right wing guests? So um, I would like to. I th I tried one time, and I think that I got copyrighted. But Joe Rogan is somebody who's going to be easily swayed by pretty much whoever is there, and um, I've seen good things of Joe Rogan and bad things of Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan is definitely a trend rider. He was riding the TYT trend back in like 2011, 2012, and it was pretty popping. Um, but he's not really some guy who's really worth doing that on. But I may do it in the future, you know. Very good chance. Uh, Light Onyx says, do you plan to have podcasts with other minor liberal or progressive YouTube? So, uh, this is a good question. To be honest, there aren't that many more minor, you know, liberal progressive YouTubers that I'm aware of, um, you know, there are really the only one that I know is a guy named Jamaro Thomas, but the thing is that I have decided that, you know, there's this kind of fringe left wing of YouTube that I have decided to just really step away from, and those are the people, H.A. Goodman, Sane Progressive, um, and a lot of those folk, uh, Tim Black even, because ever if you guys remember the Mike Cernovich whole debacle where they were trying to do like an alliance with him because they're like, we're anti-establishment, I kind of realized who the fringe fucks were, and I'm like, okay, H.A. Goodman, same progressive is not in there, by the way, that that's different stuff, she's even crazier, not crazier, but on a different, in a different area, but H.A. Goodman, Tim Black was somehow defending and, you know, he said he repudiated him, but somehow he was still in an argument. I don't understand that. You should be able to come out strongly, stance, and say, fuck Mike Cernovich, fuck you, we're not making an alliance with you, fuck you. And H.A. Goodman was being a jackass, so fuck you, H.A. Goodman. And um, it seemed like even, like, I don't know, I saw, like, part of a Jamaro Thomas video on it, but it didn't seem like it was really against him. And I, I just said, okay... These are the fringe fucks that I need to stay away from, and I've just I've done no no way with them. But if there's somebody reasonable and cool, like, for example, the new progressive voice who, formerly the new progressive voice, his new name is uh, Progressive People's Coalition. I had, a, like, a long chat with him, and he's really cool, actually, and I would love to do podcasts with someone like that. Um, but I love to talk to pretty much anybody. Um, Marcos Moreno says, Do you like anime? What's your favorite anime? So... Do I like anime? Now, that's an interesting question because there's one anime that I watch, but pretty much every year I watch, like, I watch it. <laughs> so, not to, it's not like I would dis, I like anime for sure, but that one anime is Dragon Ball Z, and I love Dragon Ball Z. I watch it all the fucking time. It's so good. And um, every year, you know, you go on YouTube, you watch a few clips, and in your recommended, you get, like, five more clips. And then you see a few clips, and you're like, oh, damn, I remember that part. Now I want to see that again, too. And it's just never-ending. So, it's fucking awesome. That's my favorite. And he asks another question. He says, are you a gamer? Um, yes, I am indeed. Uh, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty. I'm not really playing any games right now. But I play, you know, uh, kind, of, kind of what you could say, kind of like a wider array. I like playing MMORPGs. Uh, I, pl I like playing Call of Duty, you know, um, I like playing StarCraft is another good game, um, I like playing a lot of older school games, actually, you know, Donkey Kong, Street Fighter, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, um, I used to play Mario a long time ago, but not really anymore, you know, Sonic, and just a lot of those different games, which are a lot of fun, Mega Man, actually, Mega Man's a really big one that I like, um, so though I do play, I do play, um, a wider range, although I'm not really playing any right now. Um, Ephraim Josine asks, Hello, PV, fellow progressive YouTuber here. My question is, do you think FDR would be received well today by Democrats, or would he get cheated out of it like Bernie? Um, 
he would definitely get cheated out of it for sure. He's he's even further than what what you would consider like you know someone like Bernie. Um, he and he actually had to fight really hard to get the Democratic nomination. If you look into it, it's pretty crazy. Um, nice legs, babe. Asks who are your big influences? Um, you know my big influences definitely are those that big five that I mentioned earlier. You know, um, secular talk, David Pakman, uh, Sam Cedar. Um, the Humanist Report, and, um, you know, the Jimmy Dore Show, those are definitely all influences. You could also consider TYT an influence, but I don't really watch them anymore. Um, but those are definitely the big influences. Um, God asks, have you thought about maybe making longer videos instead of about average of between three to four minute ones? Now, um, I've, I've thought about it because some people will tell me, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, maybe instead of making, like, because I make a lot of videos, like, almost every day, it's like six videos, um, and they'll be like, whoa, like, that's a lot of videos, have you ever thought of making longer, like, two, three videos, and, um, the answer is no, because it just, it's not beneficial in any way, shape, or form, um, let me see, Chaos says, would you invite other political show hosts like Pac-Man, Kalinsky, Dor, Sargon, and etc. to your show. So my show's format is definitely not like that. I could have a chat with any of them, and I'd be more than willing to have a chat with pretty much anybody. Pretty much anybody. Um, you know, like with, with Sargon, like the thing that Kyle did with Sargon, I thought was a very good and structured kind of conversation. I, I'd definitely be down for that as well. He also asked, why did you decide to create a channel based on politics? You know, I had a very strong interest in politics, and I always wanted to do YouTube. And uh, it kind of just meshed together, and I guess, right, it's very unfortunate because I started right, like, literally the day after the election ended. So, I missed, like, a lot of hype, you know, a lot of people came up, like, the Humanist Report, his channel was kind of, like, crazy grown over the primary. So, you know, I kind of missed out on a big, uh, on a big opportunity there. But, um, let's see, so Hitchhiker says... This is not a question, but something I really want you to talk about in your next video. I've noticed that YouTube's recommendation system largely favors right-wing videos. I could watch one of your videos, and the next thing I know is that there's dozens of right-wing and shitlord videos on my sidebar. Yeah, that is, uh, that's actually very true. I've seen that as well, and it's, you know, you watch one, and you're all of a sudden in this vortex of just basically right-wing garbage, and it's pretty, uh... It's pretty, uh, pretty fucked. The Fighter 0110 says, Where are you from originally? Also, were you always a progressive liberal, or did you have a different political views back then? So, I'm actually only 17. I was born in the U.S., so, you know, I'm from the United States. My parents are from Afghanistan, though. Um, were you a progressive liberal? I've always been a liberal, but I've never had, back in the day, obviously, because I was very young, I didn't really have any, like, specific set policy beliefs or anything like that. Um, let's see, Matt, the Matt Dimitri show says, can you devote at least a video a week to bashing any corporate Democrats? You like Jimmy D, so I wonder why you don't have much content of late on this. There's already enough on YouTube of the progressive left bashing corporate Democrats. You know, Jimmy Dore does a lot of it. The Humanist Report does a lot of it. Secular Talk does a lot of it. I think when you look at the big hole, um, besides, like, maybe, like, David Pakman and Sam Cedar and every once in a while Kyle Kalinske, there's not too many videos going after the right wing and Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder, so I like to kind of try to fill that hole, and I think that it's, um, much more well-received. Now, um, let's see, Secular Talk, not the real one, says, do videos on Mark Dice, I've asked this a couple times before as well, as I said, Mark Dice, not worth it, he's just a fucking lunatic. Um, you know, Gasai says, opinion on gender pay gap. So it's not actually, I don't think that it's actually a gender pay gap. When you look at it, really, it's just, um, how much per dollar they make. Um, but that doesn't take account into anything of profession or seniority or any of that stuff. Um, amateur professional says, when did you first gain an interest in politics? When I first really gained my interest in politics, it was... Um, it was about three years ago, about three years ago, two to three years ago. So not too long ago when I really gained my interest in it. Um, Bobby Butler <clears throat> says, do you think morals are objective or subjective? Explain your answer, answer thoroughly, please. Um, unfortunately I can't answer it thoroughly because this is not really my, you know, where I really have a background in. 
um, you could probably get that more from somebody who's like a theist or atheist YouTuber. But I would say that morals are pretty subjective. Uh, I don't think that there's any really such thing as objective morals because there's no such thing as really like a universal moral. And I don't know how you would determine that. It's not like a math equation where 2 plus 2 equals 4. You have all kinds of different thoughts and different things like that. Uh, Anti Coco says, what is your favorite woke book? I don't really know what that means. So I can't really give you an answer with that. Um, let's see. Diego Moran says, um, are you ever patronized by anyone older than you that, that you're an entitled millennial? If so, what is your response? Not, not really. No, not that I can really think of. So, no, I haven't been. Um, if I had to respond, I would just kind of laugh at them, I guess. I mean, it's kind of stupid. Um, let's see. It says, are you single? Yes. Uh, what do you think about the debate Kyle and had with Sam Harris? It wasn't a debate. It was an interview. And Sam Harris was really angry. And he actually read what he wrote on his site. He actually apologized for, uh, he actually apologized for, uh, cutting him off because he kept interrupting him. And I thought that it was more like a... I'm good. It was more like a therapeutic session for Sam Harris, where he was just so pissed, and he just let out, like, so much of his anger. Uh, he says, Noam Chomsky or Sam Harris, Noam Chomsky any day. Would you consider reducing your carbon footprint in any way by being a vegan slash vegetarian or driving an electric car? Uh, you know, I'm only 17, so I haven't really thought about the car. I would be open to the electric car. Um, being a vegan or vegetarian, no. Um, what's up with all the conservative Canadians migrating to the U.S. to spread nonsense via media? Gavin McInnes, Stephen Crowder, Lauren Southern. I mean, I guess this is the only place that they can really thrive. I mean, that's what it seems to be, right? He also says, you're in favor of strategic voting. What do you think about David Pakman's position on not wanting to vote for Jill Stein, even if he was in a blue state because she's nutty? Does that mean he thinks Kyle Kalinske is adult? I don't know. I don't think that he, or a daft, I mean, my bad. <laughs> Um, I don't think that he thinks Kyle Kalinske is a daft. I think that David Pakman's position on Joe Stein is completely retarded, and I don't even—I've never seen him drop the ball harder than on Joe Stein. I think that it's extremely stupid. Uh, Billy Badass says, "Why aren't you a socialist?" Um, I think that there are many benefits to the free market. You know, cars, phones, many different things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I don't think that socialism is the way to go. Um, I am a social democrat. I believe in a. You know, capitalist country, but a heavy-ass welfare state. Um, let's see. Neocat Underground says, What do you think of the idea of using mobile journalism, using co co wait, sorry, apps and mobile devices to cover the news as a safety net in case we lose net neutrality? Um, I think that is going to become key because um, the, uh, is it the FEC? I think it's the FEC. Had the chairman, Ajit Pai, was just... Uh, I believe he was just confirmed, and he's a crazy person who's very anti, um, who's very anti net neutrality. Uh, Daniel twelve thirty three says, "What made you become a liberal?" Um, you know, what made me become a liberal? It was kind of like when I was growing up, I guess. Just, I don't know. I mean, it just kind of happened, and then I started to look into it, and I was like, okay, you know. This kind of stuff is what it is. And uh, he also says, were you ever a conservative? The answer is no. And the last question here from Ranulfo Alvarado. He says, what made you to start making YouTube videos? Just a massive interest. And I've always loved the idea of making videos, having a channel, making videos. Just a really, really huge interest of mine. And it, f it finally manifested. And we are now at 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all your questions, and we'll probably do another Q&A sometime down the road. Thank you guys so much.